So chemical reactions are represented by chemical equations, and chemical equations are built from a number of different components that are designed to track which atoms are reacting and what they turn into. So if you look at example A, the reaction of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to produce water vapor, you can see that there are a number of different pieces. To the left of each chemical formula, we have a number. And those numbers represent how many molecules have to react. So in this case, we have two hydrogen molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule to produce two water molecules. And if you count with the little subscripts, if we have two hydrogen atoms per hydrogen molecule, and there are two hydrogen molecules, we have four hydrogen atoms. So we have four H's. And on the left-hand side, that represents all the reactants. On the right-hand side, we have the products. We have water, which contains two hydrogen atoms, and there are two water molecules being produced. So again, we have four hydrogen atoms. There are one oxygen molecule composed of two oxygen atoms, so we have two oxygens. And on the right-hand side, the product side, we have one oxygen atom per molecule, but we have two molecules, so we again have two oxygens. The number of atoms going into the reaction is exactly the same as the number of atoms coming out of the reaction. So we can say when this happens, we have a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so now we'll turn to example B. Example B is the reaction of oxygen gas with nitrogen monoxide gas to produce nitrogen dioxide gas. And in this example, we don't have a balanced chemical equation. Right now, we have three oxygens and one nitrogen on the reactant side, and two oxygens and one nitrogen on the product side. So we have an unbalanced equation. The number of atoms going in does not equal the number of atoms coming out. So what we have to do is we have to add coefficients out in front of each of the molecules in order to get those atoms balanced. And this can be kind of tricky to do. Uh, there are some algorithms that you can follow. You can look them up online if you'd like. In general though, the easiest way to is trial and error with a couple of rules of thumb. So one thing to consider is look for things that show up only in one molecule per side, or look for atoms that show up in odd numbers on one side and even numbers on the other side. In this case, what we can do is we can look at nitrogen. Nitrogen only shows up in one molecule on each side of the equation, and that means the coefficient for the nitrogens has to be the same. And if we look at the unbalanced oxygens, we can see that there are only ever going to be an even number of oxygens available on the right-hand side. So what we can do is we make the left-hand side have an even number of oxygens. And the easiest way to do that is to simply double the nitrogen monoxide. And now we have two nitrogens, two oxygens coming from the nitrogen monoxides, two oxygens coming from the diatomic oxygen molecule, so now we have four oxygens and two nitrogens on the left-hand side, and we have two oxygens and one nitrogen on the product side. The obvious way to resolve that, get them balanced, is to simply double the nitrogen monoxide. And now we have four oxygens and two nitrogens on the reactant side and the product side. 